Yes, I can thank the Lord for saving me. Um, it's a few things I like to thank the Lord for. Um, yeah, first of all, for camp, it was really good. Um, you know, just, um, yeah, so many um, fellowship with um, different brothers and sisters and um, just amazing, um, you know, wherever God saves these souls and, um, you know, um, when they call out to God and, and they just um, gather them and into one place. Um, and, and give them, um, you know, shepherds over their soul. And um, yeah, it just, you know, really good hearing their testimonies. And um, and also, um, I was, there, there's a healing that I've been um, just looking to the Lord, um, yeah, to, to find um, some, um, I guess, the, the victory to this healing. And, um, and um, just every day I've been just opening to Proverbs and um, um, I just how um, I just love how the Lord says, you know, to to seek wisdom, you know, to seek wisdom, but uh, more importantly, to seek knowledge uh, for that discretion. Um, because it's that that spiritual discretion, um, that godly wisdom that will uh, when we seek and find it. Um, it will like a guard, it will protect us and it will guard us and keep us. And, um, and there's this um, one that talks about how it will um, be life um, healing for our flesh um, in the Amplified version of the Bible. And, um, and I found that um, just really interesting, you know, how, you know, the wisdom of God and, um, and it just kind of um, uh, reminded me um, what it says um, before that. It says how, you know, the word of God, you know, by his word, God, um, you know, he, he created the heavens and the earth. And, and I just thought, yeah, you know, um, every time um, these, the, the sick people came to Jesus and, um, and Jesus, all he had to do was just speak the word. You know, he spoke the word and these people were healed. And, and I believe just coming to the Lord um, every day, you know, and, and just seek him you know, seek him for his, his word, his healing. And I can see, um, you know, this morning, um, you know, there was no pain at all. And, and um, you know, I, I just love how the Lord, um, you know, just takes my attention, uh, my focus off, you know, um, the, the need for healing and, and just, um, and, and teach me something else, you know, that, um, yeah, it, it just, um, um, it, it's really good. And also I, I praise the Lord for, um, um, these souls that the Lord have been put in my path, um, you know, we were just in a shopping mall and, and these, you know, this lady just came up and start talking to me and, um, and, um, and then she made a comment about, you know, how, um, how I was, um, um, my conduct. And I said, well, it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm, um, I've been going to this um, church for over 20 something years. So I just praise the Lord for the opportunity to, um, to tell her because she, um, she has um, just no, she's never ever heard anything like that. And in the end, um, yeah, she just thanked me. And, um, you know, I, I just pray that, um, you know, we, we meet again and um, yeah, just praise the Lord for all the souls that he's been bringing to my path. And, um, and then, yeah, they're able to see um, this life that we have, um, yeah, because I they they've um I've told them what my life used to be, and and it's just so different. You know, they wouldn't be able to see what you know what what it was before. You know how the Lord just totally changed it, and and just giving me so much blessing. You know, to my family, giving me um, a purpose, um, and yeah, so much more, and and this great family of God, and I yeah, I can't thank the Lord every day for that. Praise the Lord for that testimony and praise the Lord for his vineyards that are out in this world. You know, the Lord is uh, building something great and it's, it was a good thing to see new brothers and sisters there at camp. And also, you know, um, there was a couple of thoughts there about the Lord's word. So praise the Lord for his powerful words that, you know, help to guide us and that, um, you know, his, his being in our lives can easily be shown to, you know, new souls that we come across. So praise the Lord for that uh, testimony. Who's got another testimony to share? Brother Eli.
Yeah, I've got a lot to praise the Lord for. Um, I've had an incredibly blessed life. I was brought up in the Lord by my parents. Um, at the age of 14, I started seeking, not started seeking, I'd already been seeking for a couple of years, um, but I received the Holy Spirit at the age of 14, and a couple of weeks after that, I was baptised down at uh, our church camp at Karakalinga. Um, but prior to that, I was uh, sort of, you know, praying not really for the right reasons, which is why it took me so long. Um, I was praying because all my mates had it. I thought it was cool, but I didn't really know or didn't really have a true appreciation of what it really meant to um, have the Holy Spirit. Um, but uh, yeah, all through high school, um, I've been really blessed. Um, uh, I haven't had any major injuries or anything, which I'm really thankful for. But one thing that um, happened around when I was 15 or 16 is a lot of my um, mates left the fellowship. So about 11 of them within a one to two year span. And it sort of really made me realize um, or made me think like out of everyone, we're all brought up, you know, uh, being taught the same thing, uh, um, uh, you know, brought up by our parents in the fellowship. But why I'm, it was like maybe me and two other mates that were left over, like, why are we still here? Um, what's different about us? Um, and it sort of made me really have a lot of, uh, you know, really think inwards about what, um, what I was doing here, like what the real reason is to be in the Lord um, and uh, what's different about me compared to them. And I realized that it was the fact that um, uh, I enjoyed reading my Bible, um, praying, attending youngies um, and uh, getting involved. Um, and that's something I really started to um, take on a bit more uh, in um, youngies back in Adelaide is really getting involved and helping out with the young peoples. Um, and that's just brought a lot of blessings along with that. Um, when about year nine in high school, um, there was, uh, some, uh, gay marriage was being in the topic of being legalized at the time. And, uh, we had to go around in a circle of about 50 of us and, um, talk about, uh, or give our opinion on it. And it slowly went around one by one. And I was sort of towards the end. Um, and I thought, well, it'd be a bit of a shame if I wasn't, if I was to, you know, go along and agree with it to try and preserve my self image. Um, but I thought, no, this is a perfect opportunity to stand up for the Lord. And I um, actually brought out the scripture, um, scriptures about it and gave my opinion on it. Um, and uh, I've received a lot of hate from that. Um, they you know, call me all sorts of things, accuse me of wanting to do terrible things. And it started to have a real effect on me for a couple of weeks. Um, but I just called out to the Lord about it. I was pretty done with it by that time. And uh, instantly, um, the week after, the people that were instigating, or the person that was instigating that bullying left the, left the school. Um, and that was pretty clear to me that that was uh, the Lord working there. Um, another thing lately that I've been praying about is, uh, uh, and thinking about is witnessing. Um, it's something that I feel like I hadn't um, done enough of. Um, and, I was just in the city one day and these two people came up to me and they said, um, hey, we're going around and we're interviewing people about their Bible knowledge. And I thought that was interesting. So initially I was just going to, you know, be like, no, nah, I'm not interested and walk away like, like you would. Um, but I thought, no, this is, again, another good opportunity for me to have a witness. And I did. We talked for about an hour and a half. Um, but although nothing ended up coming out of it in terms of their salvation, um, uh, it sort of made me really... Um, uh, it sort of sharpened me up a little bit. It made me want to go back and read my Bible more, understand things more, and then also witness to more people. And out of that, I've now started witnessing to a lot of um, people at my work as well, um, which has been really good. And one of them uh, might be coming along to a Youngies event soon when I get back to Adelaide, which will be really nice. Um, but yeah, besides that, uh, really blessed life in the Lord. And uh, yeah, I thank you all for being so hospitable. Um, it's been a really good time here. Um, and yeah, just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for our brother's salvation testimony and, uh, you know, that he can testify that the Lord works in his life. You know, we, um, we hear a lot of different stories and, you know, different um, instances where, you know, young people might be a bit hard, to, um, you know, kind of realizing what, what they have in the Lord. You know, even myself, I came at an older age, uh, but, you know, it's, so it's kind of hard for me to, to, uh, to um you know, relate to that. But at the same time, you know, we can see that the Lord works in the young people's lives. And, you know, you can see that structure. You know, I always loved going to, uh, to young people's just because, you know, it was, uh, 
it was a way to kind of train up, uh, you know, someone brand new in the Lord, you know, and I was that kind of a brand new person, even though I was an older guy, I felt like, you know, I was just a young person uh, starting all over, you know, and, you know, the Lord uh, just asked us to be like little children, you know, we can be like little teens, whatever it is, but, you know, praise the Lord that, uh, yeah, he's working in our brother's life, we know there'll be many more testimonies for him to share down the line, so we might uh, leave the testimonies there, and I'll hand things over to Brother Aiden for the word. Thank you, Brother Byron. All right, well, musicians, you can take your seats. Um, we do have a healing request here for Gemma and Dre. Yeah. If you go to Matthew chapter 11, we'll just start there. I guess um, a lot of what I've been considering as of late is is burdens, um, and not particularly burdens that uh, that, that we deal with, but uh, more more the burden that Christ has taken upon Himself. And uh, you know, we just had a, a time of prayer there for, um, for Sister Gemma and her son Dre. Uh, healing need, and uh, but it's it's not uh, it's not them that takes on that burden. That burden they they've placed upon the Lord. They they've um, they've handed it over to the Lord that the Lord meet that need, and that burden becomes the Lord's burden to deal with, to uh, to meet and to lift up and 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 bring forth that healing that's required. And uh, Jesus himself, he's chosen to take that burden on for us. That, that, was, that was his choice. And, uh, you know, we can go back to, the, to you know, the day that he, he took upon the cross to himself. He took up that burden. Um, he allowed himself to be raised up onto the cross and placed upon that cross. And he took a mighty burden upon himself. You know, the word speaks about how by his stripes we are healed. That uh, what the Lord has taken on, we receive the benefit from. And um, that's, that's what we look to, I suppose, when we, when we consider the burden that we may have within ourselves, that we lay it to the Lord's feet, we, we give it unto the Lord, and he takes that burden up on our behalf. And it no longer becomes our burden. It no longer becomes that which which we need to uh, to deal with, and that's a great blessing. That's a it's, it's a wonderful and great privilege that we have as children in the Lord, as sons and daughters in the Lord. We know that wh whatever we place upon Him, and it doesn't matter what the weight of that burden is, whatever it may be, um, it could be a small burden, it could be something very trivial. It could be something that we really have, you know, on the other side of the spectrum where it's something that we, we look upon and we think there's no way that I can, I can deal with this burden. And praise the Lord, we don't have to. We just give it to the Lord. And he takes that burden upon him. But we read in Matthew 11, in uh, verse 28, a couple of scriptures here, and relatively well-known scriptures you know, Jesus himself, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, there was a time where we labored within our own strength, where we had those heavy burdens upon us, and, and you know, we didn't necessarily know what to do with them. And, um, you know, the Lord calls unto us, we, we, we see in his word, this, this very instruction that he gives us, that we are to come unto him, and uh, on all of our labors and all of our, our heavy burdens, you know, we're, we're to give upon him. And, and in return, he gives us rest. And, um, you know, in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You know, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 
you know, what, what does the Lord require of us, you know, in return to, to handing over our burdens unto him? He doesn't require us to take on any labor that we can't, you know, overcome. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't say that, you know, take my yoke upon you. You know, he's, 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 he's asking us to take something upon us. We're not to take nothing upon us, but we're to take the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ upon us. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the Lord, you know, didn't necessarily say that, you know, we would have no burdens whatsoever. But whatever, the, the burden that we're given in return is to learn of him. And uh, that's not a burden at all, is it? The rest that we receive of the Lord, the yoke that we, we, we're, we're called upon to take of the Lord is not a hard burden. It's not a heavy labor. It's not something that is hard for us to take on, or at least it shouldn't be. It's a simple response. You know, the Lord says, give unto me that which, you, which your desires are, what your needs are, what your, what your concerns are, and I'll give you rest. But just learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And really, you know, what, what the Lord has, has called us into, you know, we have been called into a work of the Lord, and we know that uh, there's certainly a standard that we, we, we look to uphold. Um, and there, there, there's a blessing that we look to, uh, a testimony that we look to, um, to establish upon this earth. We heard about that in the testimonies, about how there was a need to establish the testimony of the Lord within our lives. And, uh, you know, do we consider that a burden? Do we consider that a work? You know, is, is it a hard thing for us to speak about the things of the Lord? Is it, um, is it something that we find to be a work within ourselves? Now, I'm not suggesting that it is or it isn't, but, you know, we, we, can, we can find ourselves, you know, in times where what does what the Lord ask us to do? What has the Lord taught us? What does the Lord called us to, to do is learn of him and as we learn of the lord as we as we see more and more what the lord has to offer as we we see more and more of this rest and this this peace and this comfort that he offers us we're able to share that with those around us and it's a very easy burden to take on it's a very easy burden to uh to establish in our lives and I use that word burden, you know, I, I don't mean it as a, as a negative thing, and I hope nobody here is taking it as such, because I don't think the Lord, you know, chose this burden to be negative. I don't think the Lord wanted anything negative to be upon us whatsoever. He chose to give us rest. He chose us to give us the opportunity to learn of him. He chose us to, to, to give us the opportunity that we would have rest for our souls. We would have peace and comfort. We would have a joy in the spirit, and this burden would be easy to be established in our lives. We'll go to um, Exodus 17. I'm very much relying on the Lord on these thoughts. I had a lot of different thoughts jumbled up when I got home today and I had different ideas of what I wanted to speak about. And then at the end, I wasn't entirely sure what to speak about. So I'm really just kind of going with the leading of the Lord here. But Exodus chapter 17. This is a scripture um, I think I've referred to a few times. And I, I remember Pastor mentioning about, you know, the, the first Samuel and the, and the story of David, how it was the, you know, the gift that keeps on giving. But I've been finding that with this, this uh, aspect of scripture here, where we look at uh, the story of Moses and Aaron and her. And I think we've looked at this passage of scriptures recently, but it hasn't left me. And, and over camp, I, I particularly felt a, a real blessing behind an aspect of these scriptures. But we'll just take it up in verse 9. And uh, Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Now, I was thinking about the rod, and, and we've looked at this, as I said recently, in the consideration of the rod being the standard that we lift up, and that uh, Moses here was uh, 
you know, lifting up. And, and as he lifted it up, there was the benefit in the battle. And when his uh, arms came down, there was a, a, you know, a negative aspect to the battle. The, the Joshua and his men began to, to start to lose. And I was looking at, you know, this, this rod. This rod represented the, the power of the Lord. This rod represented, you know, it was the banner, it was the standard, it was the, it was the, you know, the power of the Lord, it, it was the instrument that the Lord used um, previously in the scriptures, it talks about how he used it to uh, bring forth water from the rock, um, he used that same rod to, to smite the waters, then turn them to blood, um, the same rod was used in, in many different aspects throughout the book of, um, of Exodus particularly, to manifest the power of God. So in this, this rod, this, 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 this uh, staff, was a representation of the power of God. And in this case, as it was lifted up, there was a benefit in the battle. And um, Joshua and his men were victorious. And as the, as the, um, the rod was, was lifted down, um, there was, a, you know, the, the battle started going against Joshua and his men. But I considered, you know, here it was, the rod, the staff, that, you know, why was it that, you know, for instance, there, there wasn't any lack in the rod, there wasn't any lack in, in the staff, but it was the, the strength that Moses had to be able to lift it up. That was, that was the reliance that this battle had upon it. And uh, so there was this burden that Moses um, had been called to, to suffer, essentially. Um, not that I felt that he, he, he saw this as a, as a burden or something that the Lord was trying to punish him with, but this was part of his calling. He needed to lift up this rod and he was doing it in his natural strength. And as it happened, because his natural strength would begin to falter, the rod would be would be lowered down and uh, it was obviously seen by um aaron and her what was going on they, they saw obviously that the, the reaction of the battle at the time that you know as as, as uh, moses hands were lifted up and the rod was lifted up that the the victory in the battle was there and as the as his rod was lowered the you know the, the battle um, worked against them so they obviously saw this need and what I particularly saw here was they didn't take away the burden from Moses, but they did, and as we've looked at before, they supported that burden. They, they held up that burden that Moses was called to uplift. Now, what I, what I considered at camp was I saw this, you know, as Moses was lifting up the staff, he could have chosen to look to Aaron and her and say, you know what guys i'm really tired this is this is not working for me can you two take a turn here and hold it up but that wasn't that wasn't a burden that moses was called to place upon aaron or her you know he also could have said to them it's like well you know maybe just to uh you know just to give me a bit of a break you know perhaps the two of you could uh hold the rod up together and, and it won't be such a burden but again it wasn't moses's burden to pass on this was his calling. His calling was to hold that staff up, to hold that rod up. But Aaron and her were able to support that need, to support that burden. And um, so we read here, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand and Israel prevailed, and when they let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. So this was the first thing they did. They placed a stone for him to, to put the weight of Moses' body upon. So here it was, you know, you know that there was that, that, that help that came from the stone first. And we know that we can, we can look at this example of the stone, the rock, being the Lord Jesus Christ, our foundation. This benefit that we, we place our weight upon first. And as that weight of, of Moses himself was placed upon the stone, as, as he took that weight off of him, so he no longer needed to, I guess at this point he was standing, so he was no longer standing, so he, he placed uh, the weight of his body onto the stone, he was able to sit on the stone and hold his arms up, 
And then as we read, um, Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So this was the choice that was made in order to establish the need that this, this I guess his physical burden, I suppose you could say, was, uh, you know, that was upon Moses, but really not taking away the calling that Moses had in, in lifting up that banner, lifting up that rod. They didn't take away that, that, that burden from him because it was not their burden to take upon themselves, but they were there to support. And there's this example here that we see that, you know, whatever that weight of that burden is, we put it upon the Lord first. And then, you know, we, we can look to the church to uphold that need or that burden. As I made the example with the, the prayer request that we had earlier, you know, we place that prayer, that need of healing, where did we place it? We place it upon the stone. We place it upon the Lord. And the Lord took the weight of that burden. And we are simply in prayer holding up that desire, holding up that need for for the sake of our, our sister and her son. And that can go to, to anything that we pray for, anything that we look to support within the fellowship. You know, we, we've looked at this aspect of before, you know, like the the, the the bond that the fellowship has, the, the blessing that the fellowship has in order to, to lift each other up. Um, but really, you know, we place that burden, the weight of that burden upon the Lord first. And the, he's the one that takes upon that burden. You know, we, as we say, you know, we look here, the, the, the stone that was, was put underneath Moses, and he sat there on. He placed his weight upon that stone. And there was a support there from Aaron and her. As, as the need had continued on. And it, it says there how his um, hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And that's the blessing that we see. We, we look to not to sort of take on uh, the burdens directly because they're not our burdens. The Lord didn't call us to that. He didn't call us to say, you know, you need to take on all the burdens of this world, of this life, of, of all things. You have to suck it up. And, you know, you got to deal with it. He didn't say that. He said, take my burden upon you. My burden is light. Learn of me. No, no one see what I have to offer. And he's basically saying that whatever that, the weight of that burden is, we just place it upon him. It doesn't matter if it's necessarily even heavy to us. Maybe it's, you know, sometimes we, we hold on to burdens thinking, oh, you know, well, I'll deal with this. I can get around this. You know, I can, I can make my way around this. But why? Why would we do that? And it might be a simple, silly thing that, you know, we can just easily give to the Lord, that we can easily place upon that stone, that rock, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. If we go to, um, let's see here. Let's go to Jeremiah 6. Jeremiah 6. Actually, before we go there, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Just a reference here. In verse 2, we'll just take it up here. There is none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more, talk no more so exceedingly proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So we look to the Lord as our rock, and we know the Lord as no other rock in this world. You know, we've, we've heard a, a lot recently about foundations, and I've been looking to the Lord a lot about foundations as well. But really, you know, that, that rock that the Lord has established in our lives, that rock of, of prayer, of fellowship, of uh, understanding in the word, of the, of the blessing that comes forth as, as, we, as we seek out him, 
You know, he called upon us just to, to learn of him, to not look to this world in their knowledge, to not look to this world in, in, in their actions, but consider, you know, you know, not to hold on to things in pride, not to hold on to things in, in, in arrogancy, you know, and, and consider, you know, I can meet that need and, and I can bring forth this blessing. I can bring forth, you know, I can meet this burden by my own strength. Most of the time, when we find ourselves in that position, the burden gets heavier and it gets harder to deal with. And we often look back and we think, I really should have just handed over that burden when it was lighter, when it wasn't so heavy, when it wasn't such a big thing. And, uh, and that's often what we find. We, we forget, you know, who our rock is. We forget, you know, who the Lord is in our lives because we get caught up in this world. We get caught up in the things of this world and, and we often lose sight of what the Lord has called us to do. It's a simple calling. It's not a hard calling. It's not a hard work that the Lord has called us to. He's called us into the, the blessing of the Lord. And, and we have a support network around us through the word, through the fellowship, through the church. And uh, we're able to pray in the spirit. And, and that, that prayer in the spirit becomes our rock, it becomes our foundation. This word that we rely upon, that's, uh, as we looked at at camp, is alive to us. You know, it, it is this word that, you know, we, we can lay anything desired upon it and know that the Lord will meet that need. We go to Jeremiah 6 now. Verse 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So when the, when the people were called at this time to learn of the Lord, to learn of his ways, to look for that rock which is an, which is an established foundation, to seek out the good way of the Lord, to, to seek about his burden, his light yoke, the benefit of the Lord in your life. They said, we will not walk therein. Praise the Lord, that's not what we found in our lives. We've given our, our hearts, our desires, our, our, our willingness over to the Lord to, to, to meet all needs. We've, uh, we've placed our strength upon that rock. We, we, we see and ask for the old paths. We, we look into the word, you know, this word that, you know, you know that would be considered thousands of years old. But yet we look upon this word each and every day. We, we seek out that blessing. We seek out the wisdom of this word. We seek out the, the blessing of this word. We, we seek out the, you know, the knowledge of this word that establishes our lives, that, that gives us what we require. You know, what is it we're seeking for, you know, as we come to the meeting? What is it we desire? You know, when, you know if, if any of us has come here with a burden, perhaps, praise the Lord, you go away without that burden. Praise the Lord, you at least know where you can place that burden and know that, you know, that burden will be held up by the Lord's strength. Because he's chosen to take that burden upon on your behalf. It's not for you to hold on to. You know, I, I think it, I believe it says somewhere in the word that we, we roll our burdens over to the Lord. We don't even have to lift them. We don't even have to, to put any real strength behind them. We just roll them over to the Lord. And, uh, you know, we, we put no real weight of ourselves behind it. We just, you know, we just give it over unto the Lord and the Lord meets that need. 
We go to um, Ephesians chapter four. I think we I think we looked at this at camp as well, but you know, just a, a brief consideration here in verse seven. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So that's we've all been given that same measure from the Lord. We've all received that that gift of that grace from the Lord. This establishment of, of the Lord's blessing in our lives. Not one of us has been given any less. Not one of us has been given any more. We've been given that perfect measure according to the Lord's blessing. So whatever the weight of that burden that you have, it will be met accordingly by the Lord. You know, because the Lord said to, to place everything upon him. And as it was placed upon him, he would then therefore, in relate, relation back to you, give you a lighter burden give you that blessing and comfort of himself. And he does this through many aspects in the church. In verse 11, it says, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we see here that, you know, we've been given, you know, these different aspects, you know, apostles, we, we, uh, we've been established on, on the benefits of the apostles that came before us, the, the ones who were prophets and, and spoke the things of the Lord, uh, evangelists, you know, the, the people that witnessed to us, pastors, the ministry, then the teachers, all for the benefit of the saints. And this was all established in this perfect work that the Lord has established upon the earth for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. So we know that in ourselves there is no perfection, in our flesh there is no perfection, but we know that, you know, we're not called to be perfect in the flesh. We're not called to be a, a, a perfect um, image of what the Lord would have us be upon this earth. We're called to be established in the Lord's knowledge, in the Lord's understanding, in the Lord's grace, in the Lord's fullness. And that we have the, the benefits of, of those in the fellowship, in the ministry, of those around us in the church, that would, would, would help lift us up, that would raise us up for the benefit of our souls. And we're to take full advantage of that. We're not to, to allow ourselves to, to go forth, you know, even one hour, one moment, one, whatever it may be, taking that burden upon ourselves. Because regardless of what it is, the Lord has provided an answer to it. The Lord has provided wisdom and faith that can come from you know, the, the saints in the, and uh, whether they be evangelists, people that witness to you, people that speak to you in fellowship, they speak to you as to the things of the Lord and the blessings that have come forth, the pastors and the teachers. That's the, that's the blessing that we continue on with. We'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's speaking here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about the gifts, spiritual gifts, and um, how there's different gifts established within the body of Christ. And um, we know that it's not necessarily speaking of individuals directly, that one here or there is only, is only receiving that one gift, 
we just read before how we're all given that same measure we're all given that that same spirit but there's diversities of the gifts but the same spirit we read in verse four um in verse seven but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another divers kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will so as, as we read there we, we read of different gifts but we, we it speaks about how they all come from the same spirit the same spirit that we've all been established within so we're not all necessarily going to work the operation of these different gifts at the same time maybe some will you know have a, the established gift at a given time um, but it will be for for the same from the same spirit and for the purpose as you know for the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ so it's the purpose and establishment of the body of christ it's the purpose and the establishment of the spirit working within the body to the benefit of all the members within the body so as we find ourselves you know being established in this faith as we find ourselves being established in the spirit as we find ourselves, you know, you know, um, possibly seeking out the, and exercising these gifts. But where does it come from? Does it come from our strength? Does it come from our wisdom? You know, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And it speaks about how one is given the word of wisdom. But where does that wisdom come from? Where does the knowledge of that same spirit come from? Where does the faith that we work in our lives come from? The gifts of healing that, you know, we may require of the Lord. Where does that come from? It comes from the same spirit. You know, as we, as we uh, conduct the gifts in the Sunday meetings, or, you know, most of the time in the Sunday meetings, sometimes other times. But, you know, where does the gift of that prophecy come from? Where does the gift of tongues come from? What is the purpose behind it? It's to uplift the souls within the body. It's to uplift the body, which is one. In verse 13, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And that, uh, that last line really has been sticking with me a lot. We've all been called to drink into one spirit. We've all been called into one yoke, one labor, one knowledge, and that's of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit that we've received is of the Lord Jesus Christ. The benefits that we receive from that spirit are from the Lord Jesus Christ. The burdens that we as individual members in the body may have all go back to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're all placed upon that same rock whatever they may be, just as much as all the benefits of the Spirit have been established within us come from that same source as well. So the same source that meets all the needs that we have to, to look to him for is the same one that in response gives us this yoke, gives us this light burden that we're called to have established in our life. We all drink into the same Spirit. We drink into that one spirit. We don't have, you know, we're, we're not drinking from, from different pools of refreshment of, of the salvation. We've all been brought into that same salvation. We've all been established in the same faith. We've all been established in the same spirit. We've all been established in that same burden and that same yoke that the Lord has called upon us to take on. Let's see.
Let's go to back into Ephesians in chapter two. You know, we talked about how the Lord took upon, you know, that ultimate burden, which was our sin. He took that upon himself. It was, it's clear in the word that, you know, there was no way that, uh, that we could, you know, suffer anything um, on behalf of that sin. There was no way that we could take that burden upon ourselves. I mean, there, there was aspects, obviously, as we, if we look in the Old Testament that were established to uh, bring an allowance, I suppose, for a short period of time upon that sin, but it, it didn't take away the burden. It just, it just kind of um, numbed it, you know, from year to year. But it didn't take that burden away. That was the calling that was placed upon the Lord, that, that full burden that you know, he would take upon himself. And the purpose that he took that burden upon himself, we read about here in verse 16 of um, Ephesians chapter 2. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So that which basically was uh, our sin, was all the, all the burdens that uh, we had upon us, the, the, the things that the, the Lord could, could, you know, could no longer see upon us, that he, he didn't want to see upon us, those were all taken away. And in verse 17, he came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. So he took that burden upon himself. He suffered that burden that he was called to take on, that only he could take on. And he preached peace unto us. He preached good tidings unto us. He preached the gospel unto us. He preached the benefit of the spirit unto us. That we now have access, all of us, each and every one of us. How? How? Verse 18, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We all drink into that one spirit and are given that same access unto the Father. Regardless of what the need is, regardless of what the burden is, regardless of what it is we have to place upon the Lord, we all have that same access. We all have the same benefit of the spirit, the same spirit. In verse 19, now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. And this was the exhortation um, to the saints here. You know, you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You know, regardless of what their background was, regarding, regardless of, of what their sin was or, or, or what, it, you know, what it was that they placed upon the Lord, it didn't matter anymore because the Lord took that burden upon them. And he, he offered them a light yoke, a light burden. And they came together in the same spirit, the benefit of, of what the Lord had to offer. And in verse 20, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So this is, this is the work, the light yoke that we've been called upon. And, um, you know, if there's, a, if there's a burden that anyone wants to take on, I think it's this one. You know, just to, to allow ourselves to, to gather together in unity, to, to walk in the blessing of the Spirit, to walk in the blessing of the Lord offers us, you know, to, to stand upon the strength of those who came before us, to stand upon the wisdom and the, and the grace and the mercy that was shown unto us from those who witnessed to us, those who were ministering to us, those who, who we've uh, have lifted us up in fellowship. You know, all the, all the saints and the apostles and the prophets and the, and the men and the women and that we read about in the Bible, Fitly framed together, as we are, build it together, a habitation, a living space of God through the Spirit. We'll just finish up. There we go.
kind of scripture. I'm not actually sure if I wrote it down. First Peter chapter two. Finish up there. We spoke about the Lord as the rock, as the stone that we place our burdens upon. But we ourselves are those lively stones that the Lord has chosen to build his house. That he's chosen to put together and, and, and to bring together in this one spirit, in this one body, with this one, this one calling. In verse 5, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So whatever we place upon the Lord, if we believe that the Lord can meet that need, that the Lord will be whatever we require him to be, that we see that he's taken that ultimate burden upon him. Whatever we place upon him, we will not be confounded. The Lord will meet whatever the weight of that need is. And that's something we can really praise the Lord for. You know, in verse 7, unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed. You know, we looked upon those, you know, that look for the old ways. You know, who, where are those who look for the old ways and they chose not to follow in that way? But that's not the description of us. In verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We've obtained great and wonderful things from the Lord, and the Lord has established all those things in an exact measure for each and every one of us. And um, that's just something that we can really rejoice in. And um, I praise the Lord for the, the blessing there. And I pray it was a blessing to all of you. And we'll, at the moment, we'll get down for a time of prayer. If there be